people. <laughs> it's uh, May 20, uh, 2021. I'm here in Tanner, Alabama with the one and only Greg Breachforth, a fifth generation farmer, part of the great Breachforth family uh, who've uh, set an example in the United States for farming. Brother Greg, good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning. Yes, indeed. So tell us about growing up in Tanner and the Breachforth family. <laughs> Man, uh, uh, you know that that's that's a uh, that's a that's a big thing. But growing up was, uh, you know, growing up as a farmer, never everything that we done was for the farm. Was for the uh, never worked on nobody else's farm. They're always uh, here and 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 hard work. We had um, coming up with kids that lived over in the next community and in this community, um, you know, they would have, most times they would have their summers off, you yes. know, uh, well, at least part of it. Yes. And, uh, and some of them would work on other farms for other people, but we had, we had to do ours and I, and I worked was the whole summer, you know, and, uh, you worked the whole summer. The whole summer. You mean you never went to the Bahamas for vacation? <laughs> oh, what is the Bahamas? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Billy over there. Billy said, what? <laughs> yeah, we well, had, well. We didn't know nothing but Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you said something that uh, I think uh, Brother John, your old, your other brother, older brother, said yesterday. He said, uh, the thing that made it different for you all was that you worked in your own land, yeah. whereas a lot of the other black folk in Alabama had, uh, there were sharecroppers. Yeah. Tell us the difference between their existence and your existence. Well, um, <laughs> what well, is uh, the difference was, I guess, that, like I said, it's just, now when you're coming up uh, in, in Alabama during that time, everybody was poor, as you might say. You know, it wasn't no extra nothing, I guess. To a degree, you know, everybody raised their own food. Everybody, um, you know, you raise your animals and you meat for the winter. Yeah, everybody had to can for the winter. But the, did, did you all can your food? You can your yes, food? yes. We had to uh, when when harvest was when the, they they had a time they called lay by time. That was normally in um, July, uh, early July. You know, it, all the cotton had been. You don't clean the cotton, everything is cotton is growing good. So that's the time that we would we would go harvest. Um, we would, you know, we would go pick plums for mama to can, make jelly and uh, pick peaches, apples for every, for the, you know, canning for the, for the winter months. So you had your own home cannery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mama and us. <laughs> and, um, but the difference that was in, that that I saw that, you know, we just the uh, Lord blessed us to, um, and Daddy was always, you know, when we went to the co-op for fertilizer and everything, a lot of times they would put blacks at the back of the line. Uh, if you if you had to have your fertilizer spread, uh, blacks would always be at the black after they finished everybody else's crop. So Daddy figured out one day, hey, hey. We want to, he told us that, hey, we gonna, we need to do everything I said. So back then, he even bought a, uh, a old, I guess today it'd be a semi, but it was, uh, it's a gas burner, a uh, road tractor, and an old killer brew. Mm. So we, so what we. What's an old killer brew? That's, that's what they would haul fertilizer in. Okay. It's like that's like a tractor or a trailer? Yeah, it's more like a trailer. Okay. It's, it's, it's a trailer. And uh, and uh, my oldest brother, he would uh, he was the one that would drive. He would go to Florence down at the, uh, and pick up, you know, he would pick up fertilizer for us to spread. That's Brother John. That's George. George, George passed George. away. Okay. But, uh, um, but uh, uh, that was, but George, she was, he was the first, and I was occasionally got to go with him sometime to actually see what to doing and what to do. So let me understand this. So you you would go to the co-op and they'd put the black farmers at the back at the back of the line. So your father decided, okay, I'm going to change the script. Let me get me a tractor, an old killer brew, and and get me my own fertilizer. Yeah. So where would he get it from? He would go to Florence. I that, see. That, that the same the same place that the. Co-op would get the fertilizer from. He would go down. And he just 
guess he knew some people, talked to some people. He would just go down and get it, you know, get it for himself. So by 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 his wisdom, his grit, his 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 diligence, he moved from dependency to self reliance. Yes. Uh, so he wasn't going to rely on the corp anymore and be at the back of anybody's line. Yeah. He sort of got things together and went to Florence to get his own fertilizer. Yeah. How did that help? That helped us because we could always do stuff on time. Um, when you put it at the back of the line, um, I mean, during, during them days, uh, it was always a rush to get your cotton planted early mm -hmm. because the, you're trying to beat the boll weevil. Oh, I see. The boll weevil was a pest. Yeah, he was a pest. That was, and uh, uh, What, would it destroy the cotton? Yeah, he would eat the cotton. Okay. Yeah, uh, there wasn't many insecticides back then to control it, but but back then, uh, the earlier you get your cotton planted, your cotton could get somewhat, could make some, make some cotton before the boll weevil actually had a chance to uh, to uh, get get to it. Has the boll weevil been eradicated? Yes, eradicated, and uh, I guess it's really going through the United States. I don't think it's all complete yet, but it is, they is eradicated here in Alabama. Okay. And and uh, when, when about what time or what year was it uh, gotten rid of? Ask that question again. When, when, about what time was the uh, boll weevil eradicated? eradicated? That, that was in the 90s. In the 90s? About, about mid-90s. Okay. And what did they use for, for? Well, they used chemicals, and we didn't have to apply the chemical. They would... They automatically just supplied the chemicals. I see. You know. The government did? Yes. The uh, Alabama Department of Agriculture? Yes. Okay. And, and all we, you know, we just had to live through it. Yes, <laughs> sir. So, you know, because it also killed, uh, well, we went and killed all the beneficial. So, you know, it was, uh, so it was, uh, I guess, I mean, them, them was some hard times through uh but let me let me understand something about the the the, the economy. So you have your farm, yeah. the Bridge Four farm, but you're doing also your own meat. You had your own meat. Yeah. You so what? You had cattle or pigs? What you cattle? Had? Yeah, we had cattle. Uh, didn't do it. They didn't back. Mama never done a lot of pigs. She didn't. She never liked a lot of pork. I don't okay. you know. She never told us why, but. That's just way you know. What about uh, chickens? You had chickens. Yeah, we had chickens. They had chickens, cows, and uh, yeah, they, they sheep, were, goat. No, I don't know. Uh, no sheep, no goats. Okay, uh, just mainly uh, cows and chickens. Yes, sir. And uh, so you 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 prepare your own meat and store your own meat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and uh, and then of course your vegetables or fruits. You can those. Yes, can them. Yeah, we would raise a garden every year. Uh, actually, out there where. Uh, all the out there, if that green area out there where where we park a lot of equipment now, yes, sir. Uh, that used to be our garden. Yes, sir. That whole that whole area was. Uh, so what you're telling me, brother Greg, is that you you really ran a self sufficient operation. Yeah. You know, you you didn't depend a lot on the supermarket. No. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, that's actually a picture. Of so that's market. a picture over here. Yeah. Brother Billy just showed me. So just point point to me over here. See the see the garden. You can actually see some things was out there in that garden. Amazing. Yeah. And this is a picture of the of the of the farm workshop. Some of the silos taken from the air. Yeah. Back then there was no drones. So this is a what? Yeah, a helicopter or something. Uh, airplane. Airplane. Yeah. This is outstanding. And 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 we're here in the, in, in the farm office. And, and 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 over here. Tell me a little bit about the picture over here, brother uh, Greg. Show me uh, which which one of the uh, family members is you. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm right here. Amazing. This was taken what year? This was in uh, two two thousand. Show me 99. Billy. Huh? Ninety nine. Ninety nine. Okay. okay. Let me find Billy. He's in here. He got somebody on his head. I don't looked at this picture a thousand times. Is that? Is that Billy over to your left or to your right? Right here. Right. That's right. Who's on his head? Is that Kyle? That's Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, it, it, he's a ham, man. He always is. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. You know, um, I, I can tell you, man, you know, this trip here is one of the best trips I've taken in my life because what has come together and, and uh, here, here, let me just go over to Billy. Brother Billy. What what comes with what Greg and, and you and the family have done is, is really inspirational, because you know what he just told me is, not only did your father not want to 
depend on the co-op. He got his own killer rule little tractor, went to Florence, got his fertilizer. But you also had your farm for your own food needs. And you canned what peaches? What else did you can, uh, Brother Billy? Oh. Well, you was the last, so you wouldn't remember, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Greg doing a lot better with that interview than I'll ever do. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. refer to Greg. <laughs> and and um I, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to you because I know you you're looking at some plats there, some Projects. Uh, I want to show this to Greg before he left. Yes, indeed. So, Greg, I, I know he's got some business to do with you, but let me just ask you, if I were to ask you, sir, for young people coming up, what are the value systems that you thought made for the success of the Bridge for Family Farm? What would you say those were? Man, it's, it's work and uh, and not and not be envy. You know, um, we was coming up. We, we took care of each other uh, as far as... Uh, you know, if we didn't, we didn't, we, we didn't feel uh, one got more than the other guy, and I ain't gonna work because that it, it was all a group effort. So yes, sir. Never, never envy is envy is one thing that'll take everything from you. Yes, sir. So I, so we we didn't have envy coming up, and actually, this one thing uh, uh, when it was coming up, I had graduated from high school. And, and by the way, talking about graduating from high school, you mentioned to me. You came up during a time of segregation, yeah, and uh, you you went from segregation to integration. Yeah, tell me about that, man. That was uh, a <laughs> well, you know, it, it's a funny thing. Being light skinned in a black school was uh, was a challenge in its own right. There, yeah, yeah, you know, and uh, so you said to me when you when you're in the black school, they thought you were white. <laughs> yeah, I went in the white school, they said you're black. Uh, yeah, well, well, this this is a funny thing. I was actually excited about going to the other school. You know, I thought maybe I would. Fit in somewhere, yeah. and um, and the first day at the first day at school, they had an assembly. Hmm. And, Is uh, that in the in black school, the white? This school? is white school. This is the first day at the white school. They had an assembly, so everybody went to the room, and uh, and we had this room. I guess the rooms had numbers on them, so we had to find that number and go to that room. And uh, so I did, and uh, and and when I got there, you know, the the black kids on one side white kids on one side and uh and I was sitting with the black kids the teacher walked in I never forget that she looked at me she said come in and I said me I said hell I ain't done that <laughs> I said I ain't done that sit down but I got on up you know I was obedient and uh, uh she asked me are you <laughs> and I thought it was a trick question. I didn't know what to answer. I don't want to I said, well, let me go back to my raisin. I always tell the truth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I said, I'm black. She said, well, you go back and sit where you were sitting at. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so, so, so funny. So at the, at the white school, I still didn't fit in. But, yes, sir. But, but still, out of all of that, People that you that uh that the white kids man we, I got along with white kids got along with black kids. Hey, this is Bill. It's just uh I mean I'm just a way of just a way of life. Yes, know? sir. Yes, sir. And, and that's the thing. I think you know the the message of your story that I think is so is so beautiful for for the country is man you know this is all about skin deep you know it's really about your heart and your character. And Dr. King said it best you know. You judge people by the content of their character. And uh, when I was talking to Doris and uh, Olivia yesterday, they, they said it about best, that uh, honesty. You know, the Bridgeford family was known as hardworking, honest, thrifty, diligent. And she also said something too. I think Kyle said it, faith. Tell me the role that faith played in your success. Well, faith is everything. Uh, mama, mama was a... Uh, church uh, I guess more of a daddy wasn't so much of a church person in his younger days but uh yeah. mom always took us to church you know we uh she had us involved with uh, anything the church would do you know for us the uh, Easter speeches and Christmas and you know all, all the things that churches do it and unique we only had church two uh 
two 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 Sundays out of a month when we when we coming up. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, and that was kind of unique. Though. You yes, know, sir. we we uh, as boys, you know, we always wanted to do what Dad done. You know, so yes, sir. Dad wasn't much of a church person, so I said I ain't gonna be much of a church person either. You know. Yes, sir. And that's but Mom always encouraged us to. To go, go to church, yeah, go and and, church. and tell me uh, the role that uh, prayer plays in your life. Uh, you got I'll play a, play a big role, uh, man. Without without prayer, I mean, but well, then this this gonna go back. I'm gonna take you back a few minutes to uh, me and Billy. Yeah, we was coming up, and uh, uh, this this is kind of a funny story. Yes, sir. It was a uh, it was a day. If you've been down to the office where the where the long room where the dens and tables are. Yeah. Me and Billy that day in that room, we decided Billy was doing something. And uh, me and him really got into it that day. Yes. And uh, I said, we're going to take it our dose. Yeah. And, you know, Billy cocky as he is, he said, okay, we're taking it our dose. So we take it our dose. And, you know, we were really, and uh, and this, you know, we were throwing punches. He, he missed and, and uh, I missed. But then I said, you know what? I'm gonna knock him out this time, and uh, uh, and I threw a punch, and luckily he, luckily, yes sir, he got out the way. <laughs> and I mean, I, it was so much I put everything I had in. I spent around three or four times. So you you thought you were Muhammad Ali, <laughs> and uh, uh, and from that day we decided we're not gonna fight anymore. That's we're right. Gonna, we're gonna be uh, that's we're right. We're gonna be brothers, and we're gonna you know, we're gonna. I, I, I can tell you in the little time I've spent with Billy, you know, uh, I'm sure Billy loves all his family, but he talks about you a lot. You know, there's a lot of love between you and Billy. And, and uh, I mean, you can just sense when someone speaks yeah. the respect that they, well, they hold. Let me tell you this about I'm, I guess I'm hopping on Billy a little bit. When uh, I was getting back when I graduated from high school and, uh, you know, it was time for college. I wasn't, I wasn't too much wanting to go to college. But Mama was always wanting everybody to go to college, so Dad only had enough money for one of us to go. Okay. So he looked at me, he looked at Billy, looked at me again, and he said, "We're gonna send Billy to college." <laughs> <laughs> he said, "He said uh, Billy gonna go to college. He gonna learn." And he's gonna come back and teach us, and that's and that's been kind of one of our goals, you know. Uh, yes, sir. each one teach one. Yeah, uh -huh. and, that's nice. And not a uh, and being a, uh, and you know, it's not in, in most thing in, in a in a family, it's not no big eyes, little use, you know. You know, we all work, and we taught, we were brought up to work as a team. Yes, sir. you don't, it don't matter what you got to do or who got to do it, work as a team. And yes, that's sir. and that's the way we've always, and that's where I work today. Yes, sir. I, and not necessarily you work where your best fit. That's that's how we try to organize people here. You work where you fit. You know where you do your where you where you, you can do your best. Yeah, where you and do because everybody best. has his or her own strengths. You know yeah. mm -hmm. what you may be be able to do well, Billy may not be and able to do, and Olivia and then Mitch and mm -hmm. and and you know I take so much from this conversation. I mean. You talk about honesty. You talk about hard work. You talk about the importance of prayer, faith, self-reliance, planning. And also, uh, you, you mentioned something uh, very important. The need not to live your life with envy of others. Don't ever envy. My mother and father always tell us, never be envious of others. You never know how they got what they got. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and uh, because envy takes a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. it takes you away from what you ought to do. And then you talk about teamwork. Someone once said, teamwork makes the dream work. And uh, I want you to just step outside and just show me a little bit of the uh, outside and uh, the area. Because someone, I think Kyle said, you grew up in that house. Can you just show me outside? Uh, yeah. So we're leaving the office. And so the Bridgeford Farm is really like a small town. <laughs> I was coming down, and on both sides of the road are the Bridgeford Farms. Yeah. So over here yeah. is this, 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 uh, all of this here we look at. All this is a farm. Now, everybody, believe it or not, everybody in the community are, are relatives. Amazing. You know, we, uh, uh, what, let, me, let me point to this tree, the tree right there. Okay. Wow. And I got a tree because I was in it 
know what tree. What kind of tree is that, by the way? That's an oak tree. I thought so. I wasn't sure. Yeah, and uh, been in it over, almost broke it. And, uh, Okay, and, uh, and that house is your family house that's, that's behind right. the tree. That's right. That's that's the house that uh, they said built. Uh, actually, I guess when I was born. Amazing. Uh, yeah, Daddy. Uh, it used to be down this uh, house here. That, that's the uh, mother here. That would used to be a two-story house. Okay. at my grandfather's and, uh, and we had the privilege of looking at the TV once a week. <laughs> <laughs> once a week? <laughs> once a week. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And now Papa can look at it when he got ready, but uh, but the kids were going to look at TV once a week. Yes, sir. Uh, the brother, uh, Greg, a lot of people will be seeing this, old, young. The young people, especially those who are in urban centers who uh, whose roots may have been in Alabama, but they went up to Detroit and D.C. and Cleveland and stuff. What's the message that you would like to send to them about farming? Farming, farming is, a, is a, it's a good life. Uh, and I can tell you, uh, farming can, uh, it, it has uh, uh, done a lot for a lot of people. And a lot of people had this stigma about it, you know, because of chopping cotton, picking cotton, and there's so many areas in the agriculture now. They even looking for blacks to work in agriculture. Yes. Uh, as uh, well, like you, you met one the other day. You know, that's a chemical salesman. You know, he, his his background is in agriculture. That's Lost and Row. Lost and Row. That's correct. And and, and then he knew the uh, gentleman from Dominica, Dr. Clayton Schillingford. <laughs> they both worked at Dupont, and that's something. I came and met you, and when I saw him next to you, I thought he was your brother. <laughs> you know, because you you favor each other. You know, and then only to find out. He, he'd been uh, working at DuPont Labs with uh, Dr. Clayton Schillingford uh, for about 20 some odd years. Dr. Clayton Schillingford went to the same high school as I did in Dominica in the 1940s. Of course, I wasn't born yet, you know, but it's just a small world. And then I met Lamont, and Lamont said that he'd been to Dominica. And more than that, he'd been to St. Joseph, which is where my mother was born. So the world is something else. And Lamont is your nephew. Lamont is my son. Well, Lamont is your son. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's, that's right. My that's oldest son. That's your oldest son. That's right. But he's a very fine gentleman, you know. And uh, I, I just, I, you've got something in your hand. I wanna, I, I want, I wanna, you know, say I, 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 I gave this copy of Caribbean Glory with uh, Wendell Christian of Dominica here, Ulrich Cross of Trinidad, Dudley Thompson of Jamaica, Twist Bertrand of Dominica. Uh, these are the veterans of World War II. And I gave it to Greg. It's the only copy I had because Greg is a sharp historian. What what made you such a sharp historian, Brother Greg? Man, uh, you knew all about the Tuskegee Airmen, and I know Tuskegee is in Alabama, but you had some knowledge that the average person does not have. Well, well I, I, I thought I, you were a farmer, not a historian. <laughs> well, well um, <laughs> but I, I just love history, you know. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, uh, talking, you know, my daughter was a... English teacher, 